Hey, what's going on, guys? Um, in recent years, there's been a lot of debate about sugar in the bodybuilding and fitness community. And while you will find some people who will argue that sugar is the devil and it's the most evil thing on the planet, um, you will also find some people out there who will tell you that there is no difference between sugar and other carbohydrates, especially when you look at calories. Now, here's the thing. I tend to be very much in the middle on this. Though I advocate for a ketogenic diet, I do not think that any foods or nutrients are evil. Things become evil because we as human beings make them evil. And that is the story of everything, in my opinion, from guns to drugs. Um, and when we look at sugar, uh, we can't automatically look at it and say, that's an evil thing, that's toxic, we need to get it away from us, we should never do that. And whenever anybody's trying to make that kind of argument, um, where there's very much uh, an, an uh, almost like a pious tone centered around it, um, I tend to start to get a little bit skeptical of it. On the other hand, we have to admit that sugar has caused some grievous problems uh, for a lot of different people. People who eat a lot of sugar tend to be obese and overweight. I just did a podcast with the author Gary Tobbs who wrote the book, The Case Against Sugar, and he basically chronicled the, uh, the way in which it's affected us in the Western world and our diets and the propensity of people to get diabetes and other death dealing diseases. Um, but I am, here's the thing. Um, if you want to argue that sugar's any different from any other carbohydrate, um, you can't just look at it on a biochemical basis, right? Because the people who say that sugar uh, is just like any other carbohydrate, they have a point, right? They have a point, and the point is that there's still the same four calories per gram um, when you are talking about fat loss as related to calories and calorie consumption and macronutrient consumption. But I also think that we're missing a, uh, the point here when we just talk about this uh, on a calorie for calorie basis. Now, I wanna say that I do have a lot of respect for the flexible dieting approach. Um, if anything, it teaches somebody moderation. It teaches somebody discipline. Right? It says that there's nothing off of the table as long as you can be disciplined about eating it. Right? And as long as you are meeting your macronutrient and, and calorie requirements by the end of the day, go ahead and enjoy yourself. And I think um, allowing somebody to enjoy themselves is, is awesome. You know, allowing somebody to uh, get the most out of their life and, and enjoy their life while they're also on a fitness journey, I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, on the other hand, I think that there's a lot of people out there who advocate for a flexible dieting approach that get this message mixed up. And I think that there's a lot of people out there who like to show, themse show off themselves eating things like Pop-Tarts and eating different types of desserts and, and things like that saying, hey, yo, this is my cheat meal. Um, and when you're loading up on 12 donuts or a, a bunch of ice cream or you know um, a, a giant stack of pancakes and binge eating, that's not discipline. And that is not a, an approach that is going to be healthy for most people. Um, so I'm actually going to argue today um, that sugar is very different than any other carbohydrate. And while I said that uh, you can't really argue this biochemically, um, I also said that things become evil because we make them evil. And when it comes to sugar, we as human beings have definitely made sugar evil. Hold on a second, just wanna fix my camera there. We have definitely made sugar into an evil thing. How have we made it into an evil thing? Well, think about this. When you walk into an office, when you walk into work, um, do you see a bunch of uh, sweet potatoes or quinoa in a bowl on somebody's desk for everybody to take? Do you see you know, quinoa packets in the vending machines outside? When you're checking out, right, which everybody has to do when they go to the grocery store, do you see a wall of healthy snacks or do you see a bunch of sugar? Um, and the reason why sugar has become so bad uh, and it, so, so problematic for everybody is one, because it tastes good. Two, 
because it's everywhere and it's in everything. A um, hundred years ago, people barely got sugar once a week. You know, maybe they got it from fruit. Um, maybe they went down to the general store and there'd be a sugar barrel there and they'd put it into, um, you know, a dessert or something like that. Probably a little longer back, probably more like 120, 130 years ago. Um, you know, you didn't see this much sugar in people's diets. But today, it's literally in everything. We have it available to us in soft drinks. We have it uh, hidden in a lot of foods. And, um, you know, we have hard candies everywhere. And a lot of people think nothing um, by putting a, a Hershey's Kiss or a, a hard candy into their mouth, you know, six or seven times a day, right? The thing to remember, even if you're doing it three or four times a day, um, there's still uh, a good amount of um, reason why that's going to be bad for you and why that makes sugar worse than any other carbohydrate. Right. If you're eating a, a piece of candy, that's probably between 10 and 20 uh, uh, grams of sugar every time you're eating it and you're eating it multiple times a day. Here's what happens. Um, whenever you are trying to mobilize fat, if you have insulin in your bloodstream, um, your body is not going to be able to mobilize fat out of it, out of a fat cell. Right. It's just that's one fact that we know. If you have insulin going through your bloodstream, you're not going to be mobilizing fat. So if you are trying to lose weight and you're um, going into the office and you're eating, you know, sugar or any other carbohydrate throughout the day, right? But remember, the reason why I'm talking about sugar is because it's so common. Um, if you're eating sugar multiple times a day, then you're not going to be able to lose fat and um, you're going to keep yourself from losing fat and you're you're putting yourself in a situation where you're probably going to gain fat. Um, similarly, if you're having sugar, whether it be in a pre-workout, whether it be in an energy drink or anything like that, if you're having it prior to your workout, you're not going to mobilize fat during that workout. Um, similarly, if you're eating a, 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 drinking a whey protein shake, which is also insulinogenic because protein... Um, causes you to, to secrete insulin, um, you're not going to lose fat during that workout. Uh, if you had a meal prior to that, then you're probably not going to lose fat. So my point has always been this. If you want to lose fat and eat carbohydrates, then timing is, impo is important. Timing um, your carbohydrates and your, your consumption of carbohydrates to after you've depleted some glycogen, after you've done some physical activity, um, that creates uh, uh, you know, a, an opportunity to use those carbohydrates to benefit you. Uh, and the other cool thing about this is this. We live in this wonderful modern society where, again, we have food everywhere. We, if I was hungry right now, all I'd have to do is go to my refrigerator. And if there was nothing in there, I could just walk down the street to the gas station and grab a snack or something like that. Um, we don't have to hunt for our food. We don't have to work for our food. So in my life, and one of the things I try to instill is that if I'm going to be eating a good meal, if I am going to be enjoying myself during that meal, um, I want to make sure I've earned it. And so that's something I think that is good practice in, um, as a human being, you know, working for the food that you put into your body. And it helps us to be appreciative of this modern wonder that we have around us um, and it helps us to remain healthy by utilizing carbohydrates the way that they should be used which is, is a glycogen replenishment tool um, and it keeps us from overindulging so that's my point that's my two cents on the differences between sugar and other carbohydrates um, if you like my content Go ahead and check more of my stuff out over at warriorsoulagoji.com. You can also check out that interview with Gary Toms in the case against sugar. Um, and uh, check out all my stuff. It's awesome. I love it. And you will too. Talk to you soon.